Season 1 of Fear the Walking Dead introduces Madison Clark and Travis Manawa, an engaged couple who are struggling to blend their families. When Madison's son Nick claims to have witnessed his girlfriend turning into a zombie, Madison and Travis fear that Nick is hallucinating due to his drug addiction. But Nick is revealed to have been telling the truth as a zombie outbreak begins to spread throughout Los Angeles. Amidst the chaos, Madison and Travis decide to gather their families and head to the desert. During the mass riots, Madison and her children Alicia and Nick get separated from Travis, his ex-wife Liza, and their son Chris. The Manawas then ally with the Salazar family, including Patriarch Daniel, his wife Griselda, and their adult daughter Ophelia. Before the Clarks, Manawas, and Salazars can escape the city, the National Guard arrives and enacts a mass quarantine, with no one allowed to go in or out. The families within the safe zone are then forced to adjust to living under a strict military rule. Although Ophelia develops a romance with a soldier named Adams, her father, Daniel, is extremely suspicious of the National Guard's true motives, explaining to the Manawas and Clarks of his past experiences in El Salvador, where the military took the sick for supposed treatment but instead killed them. While exploring outside the safe zone's walls, Madison discovers that the guards have been killing civilians, both infected and not, confirming Daniel's worst fears. To get more answers, Daniel secretly captures and tortures Adams, who reveals that the National Guard has trapped thousands of zombies in a nearby stadium. The soldiers then take Nick, who is sick from drug withdrawals, and Griselda, who was injured in the riots, to their nearby headquarters for treatment. Fearing for their loved one's safety, Liza volunteers to accompany the group to act as a nurse. But the group in the safe zone won't be much safer, as Daniel learns from Adams that the National Guard plans on killing every civilian the very next day. And so the Manawas, Clarks, and Salazars escape the safe zone and race to reunite with Nick, Griselda, and Liza, and escape the city for good. Inside the headquarters, the soldiers have also set up a makeshift prison where they are holding civilians against their will. A mysterious prisoner named Victor Strand helps save Nick from guards who intend on killing him and asks for his help in escaping. Meanwhile, Liza tends to the injured Griselda, who eventually succumbs to her injuries. To prevent Griselda from turning into a zombie, Liza is forced to shoot her. Outside the headquarters, Daniel leads the zombies from the stadium to attack the soldiers, serving as a distraction for the others to break in and save their family members. The group make their way to the prison cells, freeing all of the detainees and uniting with Liza, Nick, and Strand. As they escape the zombie-filled chaos, Adams confronts the group and shoots Ophelia in the arm. Travis brutally attacks Adams and leaves him for dead as everyone flees the facility. Outside the National Guard headquarters, Strand leads the group to his mansion and informs them of his plan to escape the zombie outbreak by taking to the sea in his yacht, Abigail. As the group prepare to join Strand on his yacht, Liza reveals that she was bitten by a zombie during their escape. Travis promises his ex-wife he will take care of their son Chris and is then forced to shoot her to prevent her from turning. Whether you're living in a zombie apocalypse or just on your everyday grind, cooking great tasting and healthy meals for yourself can be a real hassle. But not with this video's sponsor, Factor. Factor's team of gourmet chefs create truly incredible meals that are fresh, never frozen, and dietitian approved, and deliver them straight to your doorstep. Plus, there's no cooking or meal prepping involved. Just pop one of these delicious meals in the microwave or oven, and you'll be enjoying the flavors within two minutes. Just go to their website, select from a variety of dietary options, pick from over 35 different options for which meals you want to receive and how frequently they're delivered, and that's it. My wife is obsessed with Factor. Instead of having to meal prep in advance to take food to work or having to spend her time and money to eat out on her lunch break, she just takes a Factor meal. And not only is it more convenient, it's better tasting. As we approach the holidays, Factor is even more important than ever. With all of the traveling and business, who has time for grocery shopping, meal prepping, cooking, and cleaning? So forget all of that and leave it to Factor. Oh, and did I mention they offset 100% of their delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity to power their sites and offices? Because they do that too. So head on over to Factor75.com or use the link in the description and use promo code RECAP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's Factor75.com, promo code RECAP50, 
for 50% off. Thanks so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of Fear the Walking Dead, the US military burns down the entire west coast in an effort to contain the zombie outbreak. Strand navigates the Abigail to Mexico, where he hopes to reunite with his love Thomas and promises the rest of the group shelter and supplies. Travis, Madison, and Daniel become suspicious of the mysterious Strand and his true intentions, and grow resentful of his lack of empathy for other survivors they encounter on their journey. Alicia begins communicating with a man named Jack via radio, who asks for the Abigail to rescue him and his allies from their sinking ship but Strand refuses to divert from their course. Strand's skepticism of strangers proves warranted when Jack's group turn out to be pirates, who attack the Abigail to take for themselves. Strand's group successfully fights back against the pirates, although Chris, still reeling from the death of his mother, murders one of the pirates in cold blood. In Mexico, the group depart the Abigail and make their way on foot to Thomas's compound, fighting through soldiers and the undead. Along the way, Madison is attacked by a zombie, but Chris does nothing to help, frustrating Alicia, who saves her mother at the last second. At the compound, Strand is reunited with his love, but is devastated to learn that Thomas has been bitten and is succumbing to his infection. Strand is then forced to shoot Thomas to stop him from turning. Meanwhile, Madison shares her concerns of Chris's mental state with Travis, who argues that he always supported Nick in his struggles with drug addiction, and that Madison should be just as supportive of Chris. When Chris runs away from the compound, Travis follows him. Nick grows close with Thomas's adoptive mother Celia, who has become a violent cult leader that believes that zombies don't represent death but a new beginning, and therefore keeps the undead members of her community trapped in the compound's basement. When Celia learns that Strand shot Thomas, she grows more erratic and kicks him out of the compound. In turn, Madison locks Celia in the basement and leaves her to die, while Daniel burns the entire compound to the ground as the others escape. Outside the compound, Ophelia, the last Salazar remaining, abandons the rest of the group to go off on her own. Nick, having been swayed by Celia, believes his family to be too violent and antagonistic toward others, and also leaves to forge his own path. Nick eventually joins a community led by a devoutly religious man named Alejandro, and falls in love with a member of the community named Luciana. When the community is attacked by a gang of bandits, Alejandro sacrifices himself to have a herd of zombies kill the bandits, while Nick and Luciana lead the rest of the community to the American border. Meanwhile, Madison, Alicia, and Strand join a community of survivors at a nearby hotel. After fortifying its walls and gathering supplies, it eventually becomes a haven for other survivors. Travis finds the hotel and recounts to Madison how he failed Chris who had only grown more unhinged and violent, and fell in with a dangerous group of American tourists that betrayed and killed him. When the tourists arrive at the hotel seeking refuge, Travis violently attacks and kills them, but accidentally kills an innocent refugee in the process. For his actions, Travis is banished from the hotel community, though Madison and Alicia choose to leave with him, while Strand chooses to stay. In Season 3 of Fear of the Walking Dead, Travis, Madison, and Alicia are captured by rogue soldiers and taken to a compound, where they are reunited with Nick and Luciana, who have also been captured. The compound's leader, Troy, is conducting experiments on his captives to test how long it takes to turn into a zombie. When the compound becomes overrun with zombies, Madison and Travis help their family escape the chaos. Troy's better-natured brother, Jake, apologizes for his sibling's villainy and offers to take the survivors to his family's ranch, despite Madison stabbing Troy in the eye. On the group's journey to the ranch, Travis is shot by attackers from the Black Hat Reserve and sacrifices himself before he can turn into a zombie and threaten the lives of his loved ones. As the group arrives at Broke Jaw Ranch, run by Troy and Jake's father, Jeremiah Otto, Madison mourns the loss of her love, Travis. Madison and her family attempt to assimilate with the residents of Broke Jaw Ranch, with Nick bonding with Jeremiah and Alicia developing feelings for Jake. Unfortunately, a group of Native Americans from the Black Hat Reserve want to reclaim their ancestral lands on which the ranch was built by any means necessary. When the violent Troy murders a family living on the ranch, Madison decides to back him up and blame the Black Hat Reserve, inspiring the ranch residents to fight for their home. 
Undeterred, Jake and Alicia race to the reserve in the hopes of forging a peace deal. At the reserve, the duo discover that Ophelia has been taken in by the Black Cat people, who she insists are not the enemy. Jake meets with their leader, Walker, and agrees to bring them much-needed water and resources in exchange for a truce. And to prove his loyalty, he offers to remain as a hostage. Walker accepts the deal, but Alicia insists on staying as the hostage instead. When Jake returns to the ranch without Alicia, Madison is furious and leads a mission with Troy to rescue her daughter. As everyone regroups at Broke Jaw, Jake is distraught over their act, essentially declaring war on the reserve. A battered Ophelia then arrives, claiming that Walker accused her of assisting in Alicia's rescue. Secretly, Ophelia poisons the ranch's militia, causing almost all of them to drop dead and turn into zombies. Ophelia is distraught by her actions, thinking the poison was only meant to make them sick in a plot for the Black Hats to more easily conquer the ranch. Left with no other options, Jake finally agrees to join Madison and Troy in assembling the few able-bodied residents left to go to war with the reserve. When Nick discovers that Jeremiah had previously murdered Walker's father and others from his tribe, Nick kills Jeremiah and offers his head to Walker in exchange for the ranchers and the natives to share the Broke Jaw land. Back at Broke Jaw, tensions continue to rise between the natives and the ranchers as their water supply begins to run out. As Troy continues to cause trouble, Walker is forced to exile him from the ranch. Walker then heads out with Madison in the hopes of obtaining water from the Gonzales Dam, and on the way they reunite with Strand, who has finally decided to leave the hotel. At the dam, the group discovers an alive and well Daniel Salazar, who has been serving as the right-hand man to the dam's leader Lola. Despite Madison's history with Daniel, Lola turns down their request for water. Knowing that Lola was too soft-hearted and that the dam would be a target for future attacks, Daniel secretly gives Strand the go-ahead to do what needs to be done to ensure a deal between the dam and the ranch. And so Strand blows up a water tanker, allowing zombies and a mob of greedy humans to storm the dam. Madison and Strand help fight off the attackers, prompting Lola to offer them water in exchange for guns and ammunition. Unfortunately, the exiled Troy has revenge plans of his own, attracting a herd of zombies to the ranch. When Jake tries to stop his brother, he is bitten and dies, leaving Troy devastated and remorseful. Madison, Strand, and Walker then return to rescue the survivors and take them to the dam. On their journey, Ophelia dies of a zombie bite, moments before she can reunite with her father. Walker then parts ways with the group, Group, wanting to find and reunite his people. When Madison discovers that Troy was behind the zombie attacks at the ranch, she angrily attacks him and leaves him for dead. Meanwhile, a local gang known as the Proctors, led by Proctor John, set in motion a plan to take over the dam. They cut a deal with Strand, who offers to help their scheme in exchange for protection for himself and the Clark family. When the dam inhabitants learn of the impending attack, they prepare for the assault and rig the dam with explosives as a last resort, intending to blow it up and give the water to the locals instead of allowing it to be hoarded by the villainous Proctors. As the Proctors arrive, Daniel and Lola fight back against Strand, forcing Strand to shoot Daniel. As the Proctors are forced to fight their way into the dam, they are displeased with Strand's assistance and take back their proposed alliance. As the Proctors take over, John kills Lola and captures Strand and the Clarks sentencing them to execution. Before Nick can be killed, he reveals the explosives detonator, bartering with John to allow Strand, Madison, and Alicia to escape. As the trio escape, the Proctors attack Nick. Fortunately, Walker returns to snipe the Proctors from a distance, while Daniel arrives to help Nick escape. Nick sets off the explosives, blowing up the dam and releasing its water to the locals. Nick and Daniel escape the carnage on top of the dam together, while Madison Alicia and Strand wash up on the shores below. In Season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead, years have passed and Madison, Nick, Alicia, Luciana, and Strand are all now living amongst a community in an old baseball stadium. As their new community grows, they are forced to combat a villainous group known as the Vultures, led by a man named Melvin, who stalk various communities and wait for them to die in order to move in and plunder their supplies. 
The vultures send a young girl named Charlie into the stadium to spy on the community and collect intel. As the stadium residents continue to thrive, Melvin's brother Ennis grows impatient and leads the vultures in attacking the stadium, sending in a massive zombie herd to kill them all. In order to save her friends and family, Madison lures the zombies inside the stadium and then sacrifices herself to set them all on fire. As the stadium survivors hunt down the vultures for revenge, they meet the strangers Morgan Jones, John Dory, and Althea. Morgan is a man who left his community in Virginia, led by his best friend Rick Grimes, to rediscover himself. Along his journey, he met John Dory, a man looking for his lost love Laura, and Althea, a journalist documenting the stories of the survivors of the zombie apocalypse. In one of the many battles between the stadium group and the vultures, Nick kills Ennis before tragically being killed by the young Charlie. Everything comes to a head in a final battle at a racetrack. A former stadium resident who had betrayed them, June, arrives for the battle as a member of the Vultures. John shockingly recognizes June as his lover, Laura. In the battle, the Vultures are defeated, Melvin is killed, and Alicia Strand and Luciana forge an uneasy alliance with Morgan, Althea, John, June, and the young Charlie. One month later, a giant storm comes through the area, separating the group. As the disparate survivors attempt to stay alive and reunite, they begin to be hunted by a crazed woman named Martha, who believes that survivors offering help is a sign of weakness that needs to be exterminated. Along their journey, Morgan meets and befriends the adoptive siblings Wendell and Sarah, and Jim, who is afraid of zombies but an expert at brewing beer. As Martha continues to antagonize the group and zombies begin to close in, Jim sacrifices himself to help his new friends escape. As the season comes to a close, Morgan confronts Martha, hoping he can get through to her and stop her villainy. Instead, Martha reveals that she has been bitten by a zombie, will soon turn into one, and that she has secretly poisoned all of Morgan's friends. Instead of killing Martha, Morgan abandons her and races to save his friends, using the alcohol in Jim's brewed beers to dilute the poison and save them all. Inspired by their experience with Martha, Morgan leads his newly reunited group to travel the country and help those in need. In Season 5 of Fear the Walking Dead, several months have passed and while out on a mission, Morgan, Alicia, Althea, John, June, and Luciana get into a plane crash with no means of returning home. But they would need to leave quickly as they just so happen to crash in the proximity of a destroyed nuclear power plant, causing the entire area and the zombies within it to become contaminated with radiation. And it was only a matter of time before the plant's nuclear reactor explodes killing everyone in the area. As Strand, Charlie, Wendell, and Sarah search for a way to help bring their friends home, they discover a plane belonging to none other than Daniel Salazar. Daniel refuses to help Strand and threatens his life, vowing to save Charlie, Wendell, and Sarah from his inevitable failings. When the group are attacked by a herd of zombies, Strand saves Daniel's life and the two reluctantly reconcile. Unfortunately, the plane's engine is destroyed in the attack, leaving Strand no means of saving his friends. Meanwhile, Morgan's group meets many fellow survivors on their journey to escape the radioactive area. Grace is a former worker at the power plant who is dying of radiation poisoning and blames herself for the reactor meltdown. Max, Dylan, and Annie are young siblings who have been forced to fend for themselves after their parents' death. Dwight is a survivor from Morgan's past, having reluctantly served under the sadistic leader Negan, before betraying the man to join the side of Morgan's former community in a rebellion. Now Dwight is looking for his wife Sherry, who fled Negan to avoid his wrath. Althea meets a soldier named Isabel from a mysterious group known as CRM, and they develop feelings for each other, before Isabel leaves Althea behind to rejoin her people. As Morgan's group takes in its new members, they also attempt to repair their plane. Unfortunately, after fixing the engine, the plane's propellers break. Luckily, Strand and Charlie use an old hot air balloon that belonged to Jim to travel into the radioactive zone to bring the propellers from Daniel's plane. As the nuclear reactor explodes, engulfing the entire area, everyone makes it aboard the salvaged plane and fly to safety. 
just in the nick of time. As Morgan's group return to their home in an abandoned factory, they find that it has been taken over by a group led by a man named Logan. This forces Morgan's group onto the road, forming a caravan in search of a permanent home. Along their journey, they pick up several new survivors, including a man named Wes, a rabbi named Jacob, and a woman named Janice, who has fled her previous group, the Pioneers, for their cruel and cold-hearted ways. The caravan's trek also leads to Morgan developing feelings for Grace, who rebuffs his advances, knowing that she would soon succumb to her radiation poisoning. Eventually, the group set up a home in an oil field known as Tank Town, but Logan's crew arrives to take over the area and steal the oil for themselves. And that's when the pioneers finally show themselves, killing Logan and his crew to be the ultimate victors of Tank Town. As the caravan are forced to flee once again, they attempt to set up a home in an abandoned amusement park known as Humbug's Gulch. While there, John and June get married in front of their newfound family and friends. Unfortunately, their celebration doesn't last long, as the pioneers and their leader, Virginia, arrive to crash the party. The members of the caravan are all captured and separated, sent to live amongst various pioneer communities. Virginia then shoots Morgan and leaves him for dead, and as zombies surround him, he urges the members of his group to cooperate with the pioneers in order to live. In Season 6 of Fear the Walking Dead, Morgan miraculously survives his gunshot and begins making plans to rescue his friends from Virginia and the Pioneers. While formulating a plan, Morgan meets and befriends a woman named Rachel, who is also hiding from the Pioneers and trying to survive the zombie apocalypse after the death of her husband. Due to Morgan's kindness, Rachel names her newborn daughter after him. Meanwhile, Morgan's allies are forced to adjust to their disparate lives amongst the various pioneer communities. After Virginia sends Dwight and Althea out on a mission, Dwight has a chance run-in with his long-lost wife Sherry, and the two are reunited. Sherry has joined a new community that staunchly opposed the pioneers, and want to see Virginia dead. When Virginia is bitten on the hand by a zombie, June amputates her hand to save her life, inspiring Virginia to help June build a hospital to serve those in need. As John flees the pioneers, he is devastated when June chooses to stay behind to build the hospital. Morgan then kidnaps Virginia's daughter Dakota in the hopes of trading her back to Virginia in exchange for the rest of his captured friends. Unbeknownst to Morgan, Dakota has long hated her mother and has tried to escape the pioneers many times in the past. Alicia convinces Morgan to change his plans and allow Dakota to join their community, while Strand chooses to stay with the pioneers to take Virginia down from the inside. While working alongside Virginia, Strand discovers that Grace was not actually dying from radiation poisoning, but is in fact pregnant. As Morgan's group continue to plot a way to save the rest of their friends, John discovers that Dakota has been holding on to a dark secret. She had previously murdered a man named Cameron who discovered her escape attempts so he wouldn't tell Virginia. Virginia then helped Dakota cover up the murder, blaming it on Cameron's girlfriend Janice and publicly executing her for the crime. Fearing that John would expose her secrets, Dakota murders him. As Morgan and his allies finally confront Virginia, Strand leads a mutiny from the inside. Virginia is defeated and Sherry's group arrive, joining Strand in wanting to see Virginia dead. Morgan convinces them all to spare Virginia's life and instead imprison her, but a heartbroken June, who blames Virginia for John's death, murders the former pioneer leader in cold blood before venturing off on her own. As time passes, Morgan leads his community to settle in an area known as Valley Town, alongside his new friend Rachel. Meanwhile, Strand begins leading the former pioneers, now known as Rangers, and Sherry continues leading her own group. The disparate groups are forced to work together again when a new villainous group known as The Holding emerge from underground and enact a series of attacks. Alicia, Althea, Luciana, and Wes infiltrate the holding and meet its leader, Teddy. Teddy is a crazed cult leader who believes everything must be destroyed above ground so that his people can finally emerge from below to rebuild. As Wes, Althea, and Luciana flee the cult, Teddy captures Alicia and locks her inside a bunker, believing she has what it takes to lead his people in their new world. The young and naive Dakota becomes swayed by Teddy's messages and decides to join his flock. Elsewhere, June meets John's estranged father, John Sr., who was a cop that arrested the serial killer Teddy decades prior. 
Having experience with the evil man, John Sr. agrees to join the disparate groups in their battle against the Holding. Meanwhile, Grace finally gives birth with her lover Morgan by her side, but the child is tragically stillborn. As Morgan, Strand, and Sherry lead their people to battle the Holding, they have their final confrontation at a nuclear submarine, which Teddy hopes to use to launch missiles to destroy all that is left of the world. Morgan and his group fight their way through the sub to stop the cult, but not before Teddy successfully launches a single missile, forcing everyone to search for shelter from the nuclear blast. The reunited Dwight and Sherry take shelter together, Althea's soldier girlfriend Isabel rescues several of the group in her helicopter, while Morgan and Grace discover that Rachel has died, so they take her baby to protect it and raise together. Dakota finally realizes her own complicity in Teddy's actions and kills the cult leader before being incinerated by the nuclear blast. In Season 7 of Fear the Walking Dead, several months have passed and Strand and his rangers have built up their own safe haven known as the Tower. Strand has become disillusioned with the world, only allowing people to join his group that he feels will prove useful to him. All the while, Strand searches for the only person he still cares for, Alicia, who hasn't been seen since the nuclear blast. Alicia has been left in command of the surviving cultists from the holding. After being bitten by a zombie, Alicia is forced to amputate her own arm to stop her infection from spreading. Alicia then learns of a secret safe zone known as Padre, which the government had built before the zombie outbreak and stocked with the supplies necessary to rebuild the world. Alicia's unending search for Padre caused several members of the former cultists to abandon her and form their own group the villainous stalkers. Led by Arno, the stalkers antagonize the local survivors and attempt to take the tower for themselves. And when Alicia learns that Strand killed one of her loyal followers seeking refuge at the tower, she also leads her people in a war against the rangers. The other survivors find themselves caught in the middle of the warring communities, leading to Althea and Isabel running away to live together in peace. As Strand's power spreads, he captures many of his former allies, including Grace, Baby Moe, Wendell, Charlie, June, and John Sr., either due to their potential usefulness to him or to use as leverage against the others. This inspires Morgan and the remnants of his people, including Dwight, Sherry, Luciana, Wes, and Sarah, to fight back against the Rangers. As Daniel Salazar begins to suffer from memory loss, Luciana lies to him about Ophelia being alive and well in the tower, inspiring Daniel to join the fight against Strand and rescue his daughter. Wes is disgusted by this act and defects from Morgan's group to join the Rangers, where he eventually becomes Strand's right-hand man. Daniel then kills the Stalker's leader, Arno, but Luciana convinces the rest of the group to join Morgan and Alicia's armies in the fight against Strand. Inside the tower, John Sr. sacrifices himself to rescue Moe from the tower and fights through a herd of zombies to deliver the baby safely to Morgan. Morgan then takes his adopted child and flees the upcoming battle in a lifeboat. As the battle comes to a head, Alicia leads the United Armies to the tower, where Strand allows her and Daniel to enter. Strand explains to Alicia that she is the only family he has left, and to force her into staying with him, he has his rangers unleash radiated zombies on her army. Alicia refuses to cooperate with Strand, revealing that she was still suffering from an infection due to her zombie bite and would soon die. This causes Strand to have a change of heart, with his only desire to spend Alicia's final days with her in peace. Wes becomes furious by Strand's lack of convictions and leads the rangers to mutiny. This snaps Strand back into his villainy, leading to him killing Wes and once again turning on Alicia. As Alicia and Strand fight, the tower is set on fire. Alicia is saved by her army, who flee the burning tower and its radiated zombies. As she departs, Alicia affirms her continued familial love for Strand, causing him to fully have a change of heart and reconcile with his former group. 
As the reunited group sets off to find Padre, the infected Alicia chooses to stay behind, bidding them all an emotional farewell. As the season comes to a close, Morgan's boat arrives in Louisiana, where he is confronted by the shockingly alive and well Madison Clark, who had somehow escaped the stadium fire. Madison had then joined Padre, who agreed to help her find Nick and Alicia in exchange for helping them with their mission to find and capture children to join their community. As as children wouldn't remember the old world and would be best suited for the new one. When Padre kidnaps baby Mo, Madison agrees to help Morgan rescue her, and so the two infiltrate Padre. In Season 8 of Fear the Walking Dead, seven years have passed and Padre have expanded their reach, forcing more people to join their cause in their attempt to build their vision of a better future. In the intervening years, Morgan and Grace have both begun working for Padre and allowed Mo to be raised by them, thinking their way of life was safer. Madison has become a prisoner of Padre for betraying them, and now relies on oxygen tanks to survive after the stadium fire permanently damaged her lungs. Meanwhile, the rest of Morgan's former group have been forced to go into hiding. Daniel Salazar is now leading a group of parents who want to take down Padre to reunite with their children. Daniel helps rescue his old friend Madison, and she joins his cause. Meanwhile, Morgan and Grace contemplate their decision to leave Mo with Padre. After coming to terms with the loss of his wife and young son at the onset of the zombie outbreak, Morgan becomes resolved to reunite with Mo and be a deserving father. Elsewhere, June has been conducting experiments with radiation to find a cure for the zombie infection, but was forced to stop when all of her patients died. June finds Dwight, Sherry, and their young son Finch, and they all plan to flee Padre together. Unfortunately, Padre's leader Shrike finds the group and orchestrates Finch being bitten by a zombie in a scheme to force June into resuming her experiments in the hopes of saving Finch's life. When Grace is bitten by a zombie, Morgan brings her to June for treatment, but the experiment fails, leading to Grace's death. And despite June's experiments at first showing positive signs in Finch, he too eventually succumbs to his infection. As Morgan and Madison's reunited groups come together to revolt against Padre, Shrike moves to quell the rebellion. Unfortunately, she is bitten by her own zombie father, forcing her brother Ben to put her down. Ben and Shrike's devoted followers are exiled, allowing Madison and her allies a chance to rebuild Padre to be the safe haven that Alicia dreamed it could be. Meanwhile, Morgan and Mo are reunited and reconciled, bidding farewell to their newfound family to travel back to Virginia so that Morgan can reunite with his old friend Rick Grimes. As Madison spreads the word of the reformed Padre, she miraculously runs into her old friend Victor Strand, who in the last seven years has reformed himself into the man Alicia believed he could be, gotten married to a man named Frank, and adopted Frank's teenage son Klaus as his own. Strand leads a peaceful community who want to help others, although he is scared that Madison will reveal his dark past, causing his newfound family to abandon him. Madison, Strand, and his family are then confronted by a new villainous group led by the alive and well Troy Otto. In the years since Madison saw him last, Troy has formed a new group, fell in love, and had a daughter named Tracy. But now Troy's love is dead, which he blames Madison for, and Tracy has gone missing. Troy's new group wants to take over Padre for themselves, believing Madison to be an unfit leader. Troy also reveals to Madison that he found and murdered Alicia, revealing her prosthetic arm as proof. Daniel leads a group to rescue Madison from Troy, who invites Victor and his new community to join Padre. Also joining Padre are Lucy Diana and Charlie, who have been living in hiding for the past several years. When Madison discovers that Charlie was Nick's killer, she pressures the girl to atone for her actions by finding and killing Troy. Troy and his group find and capture Charlie, demanding she reveal Padre's location. In order to save her friends and atone for Nick's death, Charlie sacrifices herself to prevent Troy from discovering the safe haven's whereabouts. Daniel and Luciana are devastated by Charlie's death and abandon Madison, who begins to doubt her own worthiness to lead Padre. And so, she departs to find and put down the zombified version of Alicia, leaving Strand in charge. 
Strand finds and captures Troy's missing daughter Tracy, hoping to use her for leverage against Troy to have him stand down in his mission against Padre. When Strand discovers that Tracy knows the whereabouts of Alicia's body, he takes the girl and reunites with Madison. As Tracy leads Strand and Madison to the supposed location of Alicia's death, they learn that Alicia spent her final days saving many lives, and inspiring others to take up her cause and continue her legacy. Troy and his army begin slaughtering many of Madison's allies as they search for Tracy. Eventually, Madison realizes that Tracy is leading them into a trap. Realizing that if Tracy ever reunites with her father, Troy would know Padre's location, Madison contemplates killing the young girl. The reformed Strand stops Madison, allowing Tracy to escape. Knowing that Troy wants Padre to suffer the same fate as Brokejaw Ranch by leading a herd of zombies to destroy it, Madison races to finally kill her villainous rival at any cost. Knowing this was not the fate that Alicia wanted for her mother, Strand races after Madison to save her soul. As Madison finally finds Troy, the rest of his army lead a massive herd of zombies to Padre. Troy offers to help find and stop the herd, in exchange for Madison taking him to Tracy to say goodbye. On their journey, they are confronted by Ben, who still wants to reclaim Padre for himself. Ben knocks Madison and Troy into a swamp, leaving them to sink to their death, though he is attacked and killed by zombies himself. Troy saves Madison's life, and they are all reunited with the rest of Madison's group. Troy upholds his end of the deal, leading them to his men and destroying their herd. But despite Troy's supposed redemption, Madison still doesn't trust him and murders him with Alicia's prosthetic arm. As Troy dies, he reveals to Madison that Tracy is actually Alicia's daughter that he took from her after killing her. Meanwhile, the rest of Troy's group reveal they had a backup herd of zombies and arrive at Padre to unleash them all. Dwight, Sherry, and June do their best to save the inhabitants of Padre, which includes Strand's newfound family. Strand begs Madison to help him save his family, but when Troy's right-hand man reveals that Alicia might still be alive, Madison refuses to help. Instead, Madison stays with Tracy to find her missing daughter. A distraught Tracy shoots Madison for revenge and leaves her for dead. At Padre, all of the inhabitants are quickly overrun by zombies, with no hope of survival. Madison arrives, surviving her gunshot, and chooses to be the person that Alicia believed she could be, once again leading the herd away and sacrificing herself to destroy them all. In Madison's honor, her friends and family rename Padre to Madre. Strand finds Tracy and tells her of Madison's heroic death before returning to his husband and son. Dwight and Sherry decide to lead the survivors to their old home, the Sanctuary. They had experienced nothing but grief and torture there at the hands of the sadistic leader Negan, but now they hoped to redeem it. Tracy then returns to Padre and finds Madison alive under its rubble. The duo are then discovered by Alicia, who heard of Madison's sacrifice and raced to find her mother. After an emotional reunion, Alicia reveals that Tracy is not her daughter, and that Troy lied to Madison, knowing that she would do anything to protect her family. The trio then decide to remain together and travel to Madison and Alicia's original home in Los Angeles to help survivors in need.